The gentle murmur of Monica's lullaby filled the air as I sat in the dimly lit room, surrounded by my paintings. Each painting told a story about the vibrant woman I'd once been. Perry's footsteps echoed in the hallway, remotely reminiscent of how he used to be when he entered the house, and the weight of his disapproval hung in the air like a heavy fog. You're at it again, Regina. Can't you put that aside for once and focus on something more important? Perry's voice cut through the silence. His disapproval was evident in his facial features. It's important, Perry. It's part of who I am, I replied, begging him to understand. But his gaze remained indifferent, as if my passion for painting was a hindrance. He couldn't brush it off. It's just a hobby, Regina. You have a family to take care of now. You can't keep living in your fantasy world, he threw, looming as a gray shadow over the once bright colors of our relationship. When he walked away, leaving me alone with my faded colors, I couldn't shake the feeling of loss. We had lost the brightness that had once brought us together. Our lives had become monotonous, and I didn't understand what was happening. I stood in front of the canvas, running my fingers over the colors. The colors used to make me happy, but now they seem dull, reflecting our... I asked Perry a question, but he remained silent. Then we sat at his parents' dining room table, and the atmosphere was tense. Perry's mother, Tiffany, looked at me sternly, and I could feel her judgmental gaze. Perry's father, Richard, was silent, but his silence was also judgmental. The cutlery tinkled when Perry didn't support me. It was a betrayal. He didn't appreciate my passion for painting. Finally, Tiffany spoke up. Regina, maybe you should leave art and take more care of your family. Yet, I bit my lip, holding back my bitter disappointment. Painting wasn't just a hobby for me. It was part of who I was. Richard grinned mockingly his dismissive tone easing the tension that had been plaguing me over my Regina, it's time for something more practical, Perry said indifferently, relaxing back in his chair. They might be right, but I couldn't give up my dream world. The weight of their judgment pressed down on me, my voice shaking as I tried to defend my passion. It's not just a dream, Perry. It's part of me, part of us, I said but I read disapproval in Tiffany's eyes. Honey, it's time to think about what's best for our family. The painting won't feed us, Perry said. As we discussed safe topics at the dinner table, I remained silent. Perry's parents' disapproval was palpable in the air, and I felt uncomfortable in my own home. In the silence that followed, Perry's indifference, I felt our relationship fade drowned out by disapproval at the dinner table in our cramped apartment. I turned the dining room into a small studio. The smell of acrylic paints filled the air as I removed furniture to make Monica slept peacefully in the next room, oblivious to my internal struggle. Perry silently judged me as the moon shone through the window. I dipped my brush into the bright palette each stroke reflecting my defiance, rebellion against Perry's expectations. The canvas became my sanctuary, a place where my dreams could flourish despite the stifling reality of the world around me. One evening, after I had painted all night, Perry's voice interrupted the monotonous tapping of my breath. Yes, Regina, isn't it time to finish this? You can't waste time on something useless. I sighed, feeling the weight of his words. Perry, this is important to me. I can't give it up, he scoffed, his tone contemptuous. It's not practical, Regina. We have bills to pay, a family to provide for. Your paintings won't bring in an income. But I didn't stop, continue to express myself on ca- It's not just about practicality, Perry. It's about preserving a part of yourself. He shook his head, frustration sounding in his voice. You have to be realistic. You can't live in a fantasy world. My brushes continued to dance in my hands as I replied. This is my reality, Perry. It's a part of me, 
and I'm not going to give it up. In the days that followed, as the paints filled the room, Perry's disapproval never left me. But with each stroke, I gained a sense of power, a challenge to the criticism that tried to suppress my passion. The unfinished paintings scattered around the room were a testament to my resilience, a silent rebellion against the fading colors of our relationship. Monica's giggles in the next room provided a backdrop of innocence, reminding me that I was making art not only for myself, but for the woman I wanted to be for her. In a small corner of our cramped apartment, I turned the dining room into a makeshift studio. The morning light streamed into the room, illuminating the chaos of my art supplies scattered across the table. Monica's toys and blankets had been pushed aside, making room for the explosion of colors that would soon grace the camp. Monica, curious and wide-eyed, entered the room. Mommy, what is this? She asked, reaching out her tiny fingers to touch the tubes of paint and brushes. I smiled, crouching down to her eye level. This is mommy's magic, sweetie. I'm going to create something beautiful. The complexities of our bank account and the problems of my marriage seemed far away as I focused on bringing the canvas to life with the limited art supplies I had. Budget constraints were another hurdle to overcome on the way to bringing back the vibrant hues of my passion into nights, and I worked double shifts, like a mom by day and a Picasso by night. Perry's skepticism remained in the background, but I continued on, determined to create something extraordinary out of the ordinary. I could feel the tension in our apartment, but the canvas became my sanctuary, a place where the constraints of reality receded into the background. One evening, Perry noticed some commotion and expressed his concern. Regina, you're spending money on all this painting stuff, and we just can't afford it. We need to be more frugal. I sighed. My hands were all over the paint. Perry, this is a big deal to me. I'm just trying to create something beautiful with what we have. He looked around the room where paints and half-finished paintings were lying around. But we have bills to pay, Regina. We just can't spend money on this right now. I stood my ground, holding my paintbrush in my hand. This isn't debauchery, Perry. This is my lifeline. I need this. When the argument was over, I returned to my canvas with a new solution. And the paints, bought on a budget, became a symbol of perseverance. Proof that creativity can flourish even with limited funds. As the room that had been full of chaos before now promised something special. Monica, with eyes widened with surprise, tugged at my shirt. Mom, let's paint together. In that moment, surrounded by the colors of our shared creation, I felt a small flame of despite the limitations. The canvas was a testament to the power of imagination and perseverance against the odds. The party at Madeline's birthday party was fun and noisy. Glasses clinked and dresses rustled in the air. I held a carefully wrapped painting in my hands, and the air was filled with anticipation. Perry looked at me disapprovingly as I approached him, a look of skepticism on his face. Rina? Is this another painting of yours? I hope it doesn't make us look ridiculous. I bit my lip, holding back my disappointment. Perry, it's a gift. Let's not ruin the evening. Madeline, Perry's boss's wife, approached with a warm smile. She was the height of sophistication even in her elegant dress. Regina, you brought a gift. How nice. I held out the wrapped canvas to her, but there was a nervous anticipation inside me. Happy birthday, Madeleine. I hope you like it, Perry said through gritted teeth. It's just some picture she drew. Madeleine took the gift with the poise of someone who is used to exquisite gifts. Bright colors illuminated the room. There was silence in the hall. Perry's skepticism hung in the air, and tension threatened to mar the moment. Madeline's eyes widened with surprise, and her fingers gently ran over the brushstroke. It's beautiful, Regina. 
the colors, the emotion. It really is a work of art. Perry hummed, unable to contain his disdain. It's just a bunch of random colors piled together. I don't see what's so special about it. Madeline looked at him disapprovingly, defending the painting. Perry, art is subjective. Everyone sees something different in it, and that's fine. Thank you. Her words were like balm to my wounded creative soul, and I'm glad you like it, Madeline. Happy birthday. As Madeline walked through the crowd, showing the painting to the guests, I felt a surge of pride. A gift that had once been unsettling was now becoming a testament to creative power and the ability to overcome the limitations of skepticism. Perry still disapproved, but the moment Madeline expressed her gratitude, it became a The colors on the canvas spoke louder than all words, and I began to believe that my love of art could be recognized beyond my strained marriage. Madeline, holding my painting with genuine admiration, continued to walk around the room showing my work to intrigued guests. Perry still disapproved, but Madeline's encouragement became a light in the darkness that illuminated my faded colors. Mark, Perry's boss, approached me with a friendly smile. Regina, this is amazing. You have a real talent. I didn't even know Perry's wife painted so well. I smiled, grateful for the positive recognition. Thank you, Mark. Meanwhile, Perry, unable to hide his disappointment, approached me in the corner of the room. Regina, I don't understand why you're making such a big deal about this. It's just a painting. I took a deep breath, ready to defend my position. Perry, it's more than just a painting. It's a part of me. It's something I love. I need you to understand that. He rolled his eyes, ignoring my words. You're just wasting your time, Regina. No one is interested in your art. Just as Perry's skepticism threatened to consume me, Madeline intervened. Perry, your wife has a unique talent. Art isn't about what others think. It's self-expression. Regina, don't let anyone minimize your power. Her words echoed around the room, causing a brief pause in the holiday bustle. Perry, caught off guard by Madeline's defense, fell silent. The guests, sensing the tension of the situation, watched with mingled curiosity and awkwardness. Madeline continued, her voice confident but encouraging. Art is subjective, Perry. Each painting tells a different story, and Regina's story deserves attention. Maybe you should try to appreciate the depth of her art. Perry seemed lost amidst the growing support, frowned, but decided not to escalate the argument. He turned away, leaving Madeline and me in silence and understanding. Thank you, Madeline, I whispered. She smiled warmly and patted my shoulder. Don't let anyone diminish your virtues, Regina. Keep painting, keep expressing yourself. The world needs more artists like you. As the party returned to its normal pace, Madeline's words didn't leave my mind. The advocate in the shadows had given my faded colors a temporary resurrection. And with renewed vigor, I realized that my passion deserved to be recognized, even if it meant confronting the problems in my marriage. Echoes of Madeline's words, of encouragement, continued to echo in my head as the party continued around us. Perry, who seemed quite out of sorts, stood to the side, his displeasure contrasting with my new sense of approval. Madeline, noticing how worried I was, walked over and smiled at me. Regina, don't let anyone overshadow your art. It has its own special voice, and it deserves to be heard. I thanked her for her support. As the evening went on, I chatted with various people, discussing the art, creativity, and stories that became the basis for my paintings. Perry seemed increasingly withdrawn, but then Mark's boss, Perry, approached me again. Regina, I had no idea how talented you are. If you ever decide to exhibit your work, I know a few people who would be interested. That sent a wave of hope through me. Really, Mark, that would be amazing. 
I couldn't even imagine my art achieving such recognition. He chuckled and patted me on the back. You have something special, Regina. As the party was coming to an end, Madeline found me in the crowd of guests. Regina, I want you to promise me something. I nodded. What exactly? Promise me that you'll keep painting. You'll keep expressing yourself despite all the obstacles. The world needs your colors, and so do you. I promised her. When Perry and I left the party, there was silence between us. But it spoke volumes. It was a silence full of echoes of Madeline's words, Mark's recognition, and the support of those who saw us as more than just an unhappy marriage. In the following days, I found a place in our apartment for my art. Soon my daughter Monica joined me with her paints, and one day, as I was working on a new painting, Perry approached me. Regina, I may not fully understand your hobby, but if it makes you happy, I won't get in your way. His words were like a light in the tunnel. My new artwork was even brighter, reflecting my confidence and determination. The path ahead was uncertain, but with each brush stroke, I promised myself a new beginning, a canvas waiting to be painted with the boldest colors of self-discovery and creative fulfillment.